This video will show you how to install the Brompton Electric Bottom Bracket Sensor Cable. First of all, ensure that you have all the tools required to perform the bottom bracket replacement. You will need a T20 Torx key and a T10 Torx key, crank extractor and spanner to operate it, 8mm Allen key to remove the crank bolt, 20 spline type bottom bracket tool, a socket wrench and torque wrench. There is also a small grommet to fit in the bottom bracket cable that requires a sleeve expander to fit it. Make sure you have all the components required to perform the replacement. Bottom bracket unit including sensor cable, bottom bracket connector, round grommet and split grommet for the gusset plate. Fitting the bottom bracket. Clean the bottom bracket shell and apply some grease or anti-seize before fitting the new bottom bracket. The bottom bracket on the Brompton Electric contains the sensor cable so the fitting will be slightly different to the conventional one. This cable here needs to remain in the same place. You will need to prevent the cable from moving along with the crank. If you check on the non-drive side part, you can see some locating teeth on the bottom bracket shell and they interface with the locating groove in the driven side cup. Once ready, start fitting the non-driven side by screwing it manually clockwise. Take the torque wrench, which is set to 25 newton meters, and tighten the cup fully. The drive side part of the bottom bracket contains the sensor cable, which needs to feed through the bottom bracket shell here. The crimps in the cable are very delicate and will need to be protected to avoid any damage when feeding the cable. To do so, use a plastic piece of insulation. You can also use a straw. Thread the cable and protective sleeve into the bottom bracket shell through the small hose and out through the lower bottom bracket gusset plate. When inserting the drive side bottom bracket, ensure the cable does not get snagged, stretched or damaged in any way. The sensor cable will need to be located as close to the cable exit point as possible to avoid damage to the component. You can now remove the protective sleeve or the screw. Start the drive side cut thread by screwing it manually anti-clockwise. Ensure it's been tightened to 25 newton meters using a torque wrench. The bottom bracket will feel a little stiff. This is normal for the bottom bracket. Before fitting the bottom bracket connector, it's really important to fit the small round grommet. If you forget to do this now, you won't be able to do it at a later point. It's very small, so we'll use a sleeve expander to avoid any damage on the crimps. It's important to do this before fitting the connector. If you fit the connector first, you will not be able to fit the round grommet. Also, the split grommet needs to be installed on the bottom bracket gusset plate. This grommet is directional to ensure the bottom bracket cable exits the frame in the right direction towards the junction box. It also protects the sensor cable against the gap on the gusset plate and the main frame from moisture ingress. It can be fitted by hand or you can use a flathead screwdriver to gently help you fit in the grommet. Just be careful with the paint and do not pinch the grommet. Once bottom bracket and both grommets are securely fitted, please fit the wiring crimps to the plastic connectors. Take the old connector as a reference. It's very important to fit the cable in the right order. If you fit one wrong, you will need to cut the cable and fit a new bottom bracket. If you look at this connector, there are five color wires. The top left is white, top right is black. The bottom starting from left and working to the right is gray, brown and blue. Before fitting the crimps into each hole, ensure the orientation of the crimp is correct. The groove needs to be facing up. The two wings on the side need to be with 45 degrees. To ensure the crimp has been fitted correctly, you will hear a click sound. Pull it gently, making sure it does not come out. Repeat the same step with the rest of the crimps. If you see one of the crimps with a damaged wing, the bottom bracket needs to be replaced or you can try to pull the wing out to 45 degrees approximately. Finally, connect the bottom bracket connector to the controller. To keep the cables tidy when refitting to the junction box, the cables can be gently twisted. Make sure not to overturn and put undue pressure on the wires. Place the connector into the slotted gap in the junction box. Take the cable from the controller and locate its rubber seal in the exit point of the junction box. The cable will then locate around the fitting for the top of the junction box. With the other hand, locate the sensor cable in between its various pinch points and place the grommet on the lip of the junction box. Once everything is sitting in the right place, proceed with the fitting of the junction box cover. Make sure the white seal is located in place. Use the T20 Torx key to screw the central screw and a T10 Torx key for the rest of the screws. 
Fit the crank bolts, making sure to torque them to 30 newton meters. Finally, release the rear frame to easily refit the tension arm of the chain tensioner. Carefully refit the chain to the chain set and reclip the rear frame. Before delivering the bike to the customer, connect the bike to the diagnostic tool. It's also recommended testing the bike to confirm that the issue has been solved.